Welcome to the next installment in my Guards of Atlantis painting series, where I'm making more of a dent in the core box minis. This will be a bit of a shorter video where I'll be painting Tiger Claw and Sabina, spending a bit more time talking specifically about how I easily incorporate true metallic metal into my painting process, and then quickly covering all of the steps that I go through to paint these two models. So let's dive into it. If you want to clean up the mold lines, these two models both have fairly standard ones bisecting the middle of the model. Tiger Claw has one that runs along his leg and side, over the arm and the top of the head, and down the other side of the body. Sabina has a mold line that does essentially the same thing, and this is a very common mold line pattern that you see on models with fairly two-dimensional poses. Just scrape these away with a hobby knife, focusing the most on the area around the head and shoulders. To start things off, I'll be following my usual process, doing something fairly similar to the very popular slap chop method, and all that means is that I primed the models with a medium gray color, dry brushed them white, and I'm going over that mostly with contrast paints to get a fairly easy but striking result. In this case, you can actually see that I zenithly primed the minis with my airbrush, priming them first with dark gray and then hitting them from above with a light gray, but hopefully my previous videos have also demonstrated that this is a totally optional step and that you don't need to do this, you can just prime them a solid flat gray. The way I often paint metallics in this process is one of the things I've been asked to talk about a little bit more. I've noticed a number of the Guards of Atlantis minis have a decent amount of metal surfaces on them, whether it's armor, armor trim, weapons, or just random bits and pieces. I've shown this off before in the video where I paint Misa the Samurai, where I like to paint all of the metal bits on the model before anything else with metallic acrylic paints, and then go over these with the same contrast paint that I use to block in the rest of the colors on the model. I really love the result that you get from this. It shades the metal color down nicely, and I think that the thing that makes painted metal colors look great is having some metal look dark or shadowed. For example, look at some of these real life objects. You can see that some of the metal looks very bright and shiny, but unless the lighting, viewing angle, and the type of metal are all specifically making it reflect only very light colors, most of the metal will actually look somewhat dark. My opinion is that having darker shades on your metals does two great things. First, it lets the bright highlighted parts of the metal stand out even more, and then second, it makes the metal surface look like it fits in more with the rest of the mini. So that brings me to how I've been painting metals recently with my contrast paint method. As you've seen me doing while I talk, I paint the metal colors before anything else, and it's totally okay if this isn't perfectly neat or spills over onto a different surface a little bit. You can clean it up with some light gray again if you want to, or just leave it be if it's not too egregious, since the contrast paint we apply later will do a pretty good job of hiding any mistakes. Then I pick out the contrast paints I'll be using on the model, and I start using them to block in all the colors on the mini. Given my paint choices and where I plan to put them, I choose one of the contrast paints to be the shade color for any given metal color. In this example for Sabina, I decide that the brown color I'm using as a shade for her coat will be a great color to shade the gold metals as well. As I'm applying contrast paint to the model, when I get to the chosen color, I paint it over all the metals as well, as if they were any other regular surface on the mini. As a quick side note, try not to use a contrast paint that is too thick or opaque for this. This is one of the reasons I try to avoid the Games Workshop contrast paints and prefer something like speed paint since some of the GW contrast paints are pretty strong in opaque colors, and others are really thin and not very opaque, and you just kind of have to guess at which one will be which. You can always thin down the paint with a bit of medium, but I like that speed paint, and the few express paints that I've tried so far, are a lot more consistent in their thickness and opacity. You might be wondering how I choose which metal colors should be shaded with which contrast paint, and there honestly isn't really a magic technique that I use, I just choose something that I think will either look cool or be convenient. For example, after painting Misa's armor trim gold, I covered it with the same purple that the rest of the armor was, because that was way easier than trying to pick out the trim with an entirely different color. For Sabina, shading the gold with brown also made a lot of sense, and same with Tiger Claw and shading his silver colors with black, since I was already using that on the black cloth around it. In general, you can shade silver or steel with just about any dark or somewhat cool tone. Anything like black, dark gray, blue, purple, or even a dark green would look good. 
You could also pick a brown color if you want to make it look dirty, or an orange or reddish color if you want more of a rusty armor look. If you're shading gold or copper, brown or sepia colors of course are the go-to, and most flesh tones actually work fairly well to shade gold with. I love how gold looks shaded by purple, and red probably works, and you can use green to make sort of a sickly, aged, or patina result. I'd probably shy away from using blue colors to shade gold though, but maybe it'd look good, who knows. My only suggestion is to stay away from really light colors like a light yellow or light bone color, since they won't darken the metal down enough. You can always add a drop of black or dark brown to a color if you want to darken it a bit though. Basically, all I'm trying to say here is that there are a lot of different colors that I think work well to shade metals with. I like using a color that I'm already using somewhere else on the model because it just saves time and helps to make the metal look a little bit more at home in the color scheme and fit in with the rest of the mini. Then optionally, to make the metal have some shine and pop on the bright parts, dry brush it or edge highlight it with a bright metal color. I usually just mix a very light color like Vallejo Air Chrome into the metal color that I used as a base coat and apply that as my highlight color. You can apply this as liberally or as constrained as you want to, depending on the effect that you want and how much time you want to spend on the metals. This technique also isn't anything magical, it's basically just using contrast paint as a sort of heavy wash that shades the metal surface a lot more than a traditional wash would. It also has the added benefit of being really convenient, since usually you can just take a contrast paint that you're already using on the model and apply it over the metallic areas. And it also makes metal armor trim a breeze to paint. Now that I've spent a good chunk of time talking about that, I'll just quickly go over the rest of the steps that I used to paint Tiger Claw and Sabina. For Tiger Claw, the sculpt is a little bit different than the card art, so we have to make some interpretations on what things should be what color. I paint most of the cloths with a slightly thinned down black, and use this color to shade the silver as well. I apply a big thick coat on the cloth, but I try not to slop too much of it onto the larger metal surfaces like the sword blades. I paint the rest of the cloths red, painted the arm and leg wraps gray, and chose a brown color for the belts and gloves. I chose to use a non-contrast paint, Idrian Flesh thinned down with some water, for the tail and the skin, but honestly you could just pick any other contrast paint for this instead. And while all those paints are drying, I painted the base with my old reliable Vallejo Model Color Khaki. I thinned down a dark brown paint and applied that as a wash over the whole base, but you could just as easily use something like Agrax Earthshade. If you notice the red from the cloth bleed too much onto the base, try to wick it away with a brush before it dries, or just paint another layer of your khaki color over it. I think this is a really good point to stop at for a nice tabletop standard model, but as always I'll be pushing it a bit further, and I encourage you to try out at least one or two of these steps if you're feeling up to it. I first decided to make the skin look a bit more interesting. I highlighted up in a few layers by mixing some tan into my original skin color, and highlight the tail and ears slightly differently, mixing in a desaturated orangey brown color instead to make them look a little bit different than the skin. At this point though I decided that the flesh color looked a little too light now, so I took some of that original Idrian flesh color and thinned it down and glazed it pretty heavily into the shadows all over the skin and the tail and ears and toes and all that as well. Next I highlight all of the metals in a couple of layers, but you've already seen me do that, so let's move on to some other quick highlights. I highlighted the belts and gloves by mixing in a bit of an off-white color, and I thinned down a red paint and applied it in several layers to the red cloths, focusing more and more on the raised creases and tops of the cloth. I mixed a bit of orange and an off-white into this for a highlight color, just try not to use too much of the off-white. You could dry brush the red cloths instead, but I was worried that this would get on the black cloths around these parts of the model, and I didn't want to risk having to correct that. For the black and gray cloth parts, I mixed a desaturated bluish gray color and applied that as a few selective highlights, trying not to cover too much of the surface area on the black cloth. And then I went back with a couple layers of highlight to this 
adding in more and more light bluish white color each time. Then I turn my focus back to the base, dry brushing it with khaki and a bit of a lighter brown color mixed in, painting the base rim black, and then we're at another pretty good stopping point. I went on with a couple of extra steps even beyond this, painting some fun yellow cat eyes by painting a white eye, then putting yellow over that, and then dotting in a large black iris. As always, I tinker with it a little bit and have to do some cleanup on the area around the eyes when it's done. I add a little bit more shading to the black cloth as well, but just make sure you varnish before doing this, just to make sure that the speed paint doesn't accidentally reactivate. And that's a painted tiger claw. I think he looks really cool, but I do feel like he's held back a little bit by the somewhat lackluster sculpt. His card art is really awesome and dynamic, but the pose that the mini has is very two-dimensional and looks a little bit like a gingerbread man. But that's not a huge deal, and let's just move on to the next mini. Now on to Sabina. I already showed that the first step was painting the tassels, buttons, and sword hilt gold, so next I mix up a medium brown color that I like and paint the whole great coat with this, also using it to shade the gold like I mentioned before. And also don't forget to paint the hat because I almost forgot. I painted the shirt with a lighter brown color, almost bordering on tan, just to make it look a little bit different from the coat. If I was painting Sabina again, I'd paint the shirt or the hat a different color, like a dark red or green, because I think my version came out a little bit too drab. In the card art, the inside of her coat is red, but that isn't visible at all on the mini, so I think it would have been wise to add this red color to a different part of the mini instead as a little accent. Anyway, I paint the belts with a black speed paint, and do the same with the coat cuff parts, the sword sheath, the hair, the legs, the gun, the rim of the hat, and pretty much any other detail. Then I paint the skin by basing it with a dark pinkish skin tone, highlighting it quickly by mixing in some tan flesh color, and then I shade it down with a thinned contrast paint. If you don't want to go through all that effort, that's totally fine, you can just use a contrast paint and paint on a single layer of highlight after that instead. To paint the silver bits, I load up a small brush with my steel paint color, and then wick off some of this paint on a paper towel. Then I swipe the brush back and forth a few times carefully over the gun, the belt clip, the knee pads, and the boots, intentionally leaving the recesses unpainted with this metal color. If this technique isn't working for you, just paint them normally instead, and apply a shade or a contrast paint to them in a later step. I paint the base the same way that I did with Tiger Claws, except after painting the khaki color I painted the stone with gray speed paint. The shading and dry brushed highlight process is also the same, and I dry brushed the gray parts of the base with the same light khaki mixture as well, just to tie them in a little bit more. And I think this is a pretty serviceable stopping point. Just like Tiger Claw, Sabina is a really cool character, and I like seeing what I think are strong, cool female characters in games, but I'm also not totally in love with this sculpt. Even so, I want to try and push the model a bit further, so I keep going with some extra steps. I highlight the cloak and shirt with some scratchy layers of highlights, painting streaks and occasional random lines across the fabric. I try to keep these highlights somewhat subtle and not too bright right away, but I build them up by mixing in a desaturated yellow color over a few layers, and I highlight the light shirt all the way up to this ice yellow color. I do a simple highlight on all the gold metals by mixing in some silver to the gold color, and tapping the side of my brush gently on the raised surfaces, making sure I don't have too much paint loaded on my brush. Then I highlight the black leather and belts and such next, first using a medium gray color, and then being more restrained while I apply a light gray color, only using this to catch the parts of the edges that I think should look the brightest. I do the same thing to highlight the hair as well. At this point I decided that the cloak looked too light and too similar to the shirt, so I thinned down a brown color and applied this to the coat everywhere but where I highlighted earlier. I'm going a bit above and beyond here, so only do this if you really want to. I also painted in the eyes, first with a white horizontal line for the pupil, and then a black vertical line for the iris, cleaning up the skin around the edge of the eyes if necessary to get that nice oval shape. I was focusing a bit too hard here and didn't get this very well on camera, so apologies for that. 
I do a couple of other things, like adding some extra highlights to the base and shading the coat down more, and then I paint the base room black. Before wrapping up, I can't resist just doing a few more steps, so I shade the steel down with a very thin dark purple, then highlight it with a bright silver, and I realized I forgot to paint the buttons on the coat and the coat sleeves, so I dot these with gold, then decide to highlight some of the gold bits even more while I'm at it. I can't resist giving the skin a last highlight to brighten it up too, so I do that before calling the model done. Hopefully this video gives you a good idea of how you'd like to tackle painting Tiger Claw and Sabina, or what you'd just like to do differently if nothing else. The metal shading technique that I showed in this video is one that I'm really enjoying, and using pretty frequently on these minis, but let me know if you have any questions or if I didn't explain it well enough. And with that, we're inching closer to being done with the core box heroes. This footage was actually recorded quite a while ago, but sat on the back burner until now, partially because I just wasn't as inspired about these models, so it feels good to finally have it done. Dodger, Wasp, and Brogan have all been requested as models to paint, so I'll pick one or two of those to tackle next. I'll also sprinkle in the orange minions and towers at some point too, when I feel ambitious enough to paint a whole bunch of models at once again. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day!